Hi, my name is Logan, and today I'm going to build a farmhouse table the correct way. In the past, I've built some farmhouse tables that I made videos of that I did not allow for proper wood movement. I've corrected that a long time ago in the sense that I do allow wood movement on the tables that I'm currently building. So go ahead and watch this video to the end and see how it turned out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. So I start off a table similar to every single project. I just cut down to rough lengths all the material that I need. I'm starting with the base, so this is a 4x4 four four that I got that's untreated and you can get three leg pieces out of one 4x4. Four four. I try to mill up a whole bunch at a time so that way they're all the same size and I can have a bunch of legs ready for assembly for future projects. Now that I have a jointer, I just joint the one face and then one edge and then run the other sides through the planer to make it a perfect square. After I cut those down to size or after I get those planed up I do cut them down to size. The final height of the 4x4 four four is 29 inches is the way I do it. That'll make your um, floor to bottom of the table 29 inches. And then I'm rough cutting the short and long aprons and same thing here, just jointing them and planing them. I do show a lot of jointing and planing in this video, sorry that it's monotonous, but I wanted to be true to my word and this is just building a farmhouse table the correct way. Um, this is basically showing most of the whole process. Of course I edited a lot of it out so it's not literally showing every single piece of wood getting jointed and planed. But after I did the, the one face, I do the, the edge jointing as well for the short and long aprons. And then I just mark the face that I did not joint um, as well as the edge. And then here I am cutting off the edge that was not jointed to make it parallel to the other uh, jointed edge. And then I'll run those all through the planer. I don't always do them in that order. Sometimes I plane everything and then cut the edge off. but. Anyway, that's the way I did it this time, so that's how I'm showing it. And just to be clear, I didn't start off with a jointer. I'm sure a lot of people don't start off with them, but I got that jointer for $275 on Craigslist. And they're typically $300, I mean $600, so that was an incredible deal. Um, you know, now I, I wouldn't be able to live without it, but I did live without it before, so... This is the Dowel Max right here. It's uh, my second dowel jig um, that I purchased. The first one was about $50. This one was quite a bit more, like 200 and something. But it's perfectly accurate. It's all set up for 3 8 of an inch dowels. So I just have a couple different drill bits, 3 8, 3 8 inch drill bits set up to the depths that I need for tables, which is what I primarily build. And here's a quick tip on doweling. I used to try to pick out with a some sort of pick that I had, I'd try to pick out all the sawdust that gets stuck in there, particularly on edge grain, not end grain. So now what I do is I just keep the drill set to forward and just pull it out anyway while it's going. And that tends to get most of the stuff out so I don't ever have to go through it with a pick anymore and spend a whole bunch of time doing that. Here I am just chamfering the bottoms of the legs. And that's because, from experience, I have just even sliding it across the my garage shop here, I've split big pieces off before. And I go into the corners at like an angle. That's why it takes me a little bit in the video uh, to finish the chamfers, because I go in at an angle, because if you just go straight off the edge when chamfering, again, you can split that way as well. So having a nice chamfer prevents splitting altogether, and, and doing the chamfer, you have to do it a certain way as well. And I just put three two and a half inch, three eighths inch dowels in here, and I hammer them in. Um, hammering straight down, you won't break them. If you hit them to the side at all, it's possible you'll break them. Out of probably hundreds of tables I've done, I've only broken like two ever, so they are still pretty strong. Dowel joinery, I think, is a pretty good form of joinery, and with the fact that I pin the corners which you'll see here shortly um, it's not gonna pull apart ever you know you see a lot of older furniture that's dowel joinery that's come apart and that makes people think like dowels are kinda weak 
But a lot of that stuff factory made, and they probably didn't put enough glue on there, and they definitely didn't have the corners pinned. I'm not saying dowel joining is for everybody and that there's not better forms, but I do quite a few tables, and it's this, and maybe eventually I'll get the Festool Domino. But trying to uh, do mortise and tendon for every single joint that I do, it's just not feasible for me, and these are plenty strong. I, a long time ago, did pocket holes on like, I think one table, and those tended to pull out kind of easy for this application. Now, they're still good for, for lots of other stuff, but in this particular application, they didn't seem to work that great for me. Now, I just have a bunch of these miters cut already, and I pre-drill in the side of them, and then just put one screw on each side and put a little glue on there as well, and that'll prevent the, uh, the dowels from pulling out. And the way I attach the tables here is I just use my biscuit joiner and cut a little groove. And then I have these little buttons, which I'll link down below. Um, they're a little a slot that goes in, in the dowel groove, I mean in the biscuit groove, and then I screw it into the tabletop, which I'll show that at the end. Now it's time to make the table. My jointer is only 6 inches, so for a 2x8 I'm cutting off. A portion of that so that way the whole thing gets jointed I think my jointer is actually like six and an eighth inches but I typically cut it down to slightly over six and then here's the same boring process is just jointing and planing again um, you know I guess it's kind of fun when you're doing it listening to music but the obviously the final the end product is what makes it exciting and again, just to reiterate, I didn't start with all these tools. I didn't have a jointer at the beginning. I didn't have a biscuit joiner. Um, matter of fact, I probably wouldn't even have a biscuit joiner for the tabletop itself. I mainly, um, I've used it sometimes for that, but I now I'm using it for to cut a groove. But you can do the same thing with a router. It's just that I have one, so I'm using it for attaching the table to the base. I do sometimes use it though too do glue ups as well just to make sure everything stays nice and flat um, and here I'll show you me using the biscuit joiner um, I'm just marking for it and I just put about three in to each board and the way that I do my glue ups is I glue two boards at a time together um, I of course cut all the dowels out and then I glue two sections at a time so there's a total of three sections of two boards. The reason I do it that way is A, it's better not to try to do a large glue up because then you have a lot more chance of having boards that are uneven, that are not flat, no matter how well your your jointing is. Um, wood still moves and you know. So I just do two boards at a time and then I run those two boards after a day through the planer just to get out all the glue squeeze out and just to make sure they're all perfectly even um, on both sides and then the final glue up there's only two glue seams so it makes it a lot easier to do the cleanup there because I cannot run that through a planer I don't have a drum sander or anything like that so I make sure I clean those up well before I start sanding which I'll show you here shortly And I check it pretty thoroughly just to make sure that there's no uh, unevenness in the boards when I'm gluing them up. And this doesn't show me where I had already put them through the planer, but after they dried, I put them through the planer. And now I'm doing the final glue up again where there's just two glue seams. And just uh, while this is being glued up, and you can see here that 
I first just go ahead and wipe all the glue squeeze out with a, just a dry towel and then I go back with a wet towel and get it even more after I get the main main uh, stuff off the main glue squeeze out off I go back with a wet towel and try to get the rest of it off and then finally I use a paint scraper to scrape out the rest of the glue squeeze out after I let it dry for maybe I don't know 20 minutes or so just because if you start scraping it while it's wet it kinda pulls up the fibers a lot more and it's just uh, it kinda digs into the wood more than it does as just a scraper you still have to go easy with a paint scraper because you don't want to tear into the wood <clears throat> now this product is Starbond this is my first sponsorship I'll be honest I've been offered other ones but I have not taken them because I want to you know sell or at least use a product that I think is valid and legit and I love this stuff that's a two ounce bottle of black CA glue I wanted it specifically for the purpose of filling voids rather than trying to mix up epoxy for every single table it's much faster it's much cheaper um, at the time of this video I've already used that for I believe three three tables um, the CA glue a two ounce bottle and I still have more than half of it left and you can see what I'm talking about I also in another video I'll show you um, a gigantic void that I filled with it it actually looks like a, an epoxy pour almost uh, it looks I think it looks awesome now if I was doing something like a river table obviously I would use epoxy and not this but this works for exactly what I wanted it for I have used in the past wood filler and then glue and sawdust and all those are fine but they just do not work as good they don't look as good um, wood filler is kind of weak obviously I use that for painted stuff because uh, just to fill knots that are going to be painted because that doesn't really matter as long as it kind of fills them in but if you use it on a stained surface it's kind of soft to the touch even after it's fully cured and here I am sanding um, I do sand a little bit more as you can see on the parts that have the uh, CA glue star bond CA glue but it's not like excessive like epoxy is um, it's it's definitely a hard filling but it's not you know crazy where it's where it's super hard to get off or to to sand it down nice and smooth and as you can see I already stained half the table but then I was like oh crap I'm not recording so I here I am recording the rest of the video uh, the rest of the staining process I just kinda dump the stain on it um, and then make sure I flood the entire surface I usually wait maybe five ten minutes depending on how dark it needs to be and then wipe it off the stain that I'm using here is Minwax Espresso and I just kinda go over the other side as well now when you dump it on like that if you let it sit for any time at all really more than just a few seconds you can notice a difference in coloring so just uh, be advised now here I am also using Minwax um, polycrylic semi-gloss and I tip depending on the price point of the table and if it's pine or hardwood I use general finishes a lot but for just a pine table like this I'm using semi-gloss polycrylic which this is just the first coat so I just kinda again flood it on but I also make sure I spread it out and make sure it's it's nice and even but the sanding will get out any streak marks but I do go over it a whole lot more than I show in video I like to make sure it looks close to perfect now here's the uh, fasteners that I was referring to that I cut the slots for earlier and sorry that it's shaky here but it's hard to get a holding it with one hand and trying to screw it in there anyhow that is the finished product um, I put six of those fasteners in one on each end and then two on each side so there's the finished product I hope you like it uh, this table does allow for wood movement um, it's a solid table the customers love it and I had a lot of fun building it thanks for watching and I'll see you next time